Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube, another week, another roundup, and man, it's all about DAX and data modeling this week. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. First up, we got an updated DAX Studio. So if you're not using DAX Studio, you definitely should look at it. It can take your data modeling and DAX to the next level and allow you to really dig in to what is happening. It's a tool that Patrick and I use almost daily in everything we do. It's the way that we can actually debug what's going on. So this is the 2.14 release. One thing I will call out just because we ran into this and worked with Darren to get this fixed is that it actually works now correctly with the XMLA endpoints for Power BI Premium and Power BI Premium per user. One thing to note on that though, is you may still need to up the trace timeout under the option settings. Darren calls out that it should be, you could have to go up to 90 seconds. From what I've seen, 60 seconds should be okay, or you may not need it at all, but just be aware if it does timeout, bump that up and it should work okay. So link down in the description below to the blog post where it has a link where you can go download it and get it updated on your machine. Do it. Baz over at How To Power BI has got a short video. It's labeled short, uh, looking at the ALM toolkit. So this is one of the three tools that we definitely recommend, DAX Studio, Tabular Editor, and the ALM toolkit. This is a tool that we use. So it compares Power BI desktop to the premium capacity data set, or it can go to Azure Analysis Services to Tabular on-premises. It's just a way to compare model schema from a tabular model perspective. There's actually a great case of where we used ALM toolkit for a video that Patrick's working on that's gonna be amazing, dealing with incremental refresh. So stay tuned for that. Ruth Pozuelo over at the Kerbal channel has got one of her DAX Friday challenges, but it's really looking at how, why is DAX so hard? Or like, why is it so complicated to break that barrier of knowledge? And she just looks at one specific DAX function, but coming at it from different ways where it gives you different results. And so this just goes back to where you need to understand you know, evaluation context. So the filter context, row context, how things are related to each other and how that affects the results that you get. Once you understand that DAX becomes easier for you because you understand how everything is relating to each other and how it can be affected. Also, let me just tell you that the struggle is real. And this is something Patrick and I had to go through as well. Everyone that's learning this has to go through that knowledge ramp and you are not alone. Another thing I'll just call out to help you in that journey, get this book, The Definitive Guide to DAX. It is a must have. It is something that Patrick and I reference a lot. We've read it. There's lots of great chapters about how the engine works, different functions, how evaluation context works. All of that information is in this book. So definitely have this on your shelf. All right, four and five kind of go together, uh, but I'm calling them out separately just because there's different pieces of this. The first is a video from Marco Russo where it's just exploring the Power BI composite model update. So this is the direct query over Power BI data sets. This is a not so straightforward thing to understand in terms of what it's actually doing. So this is their first unplugged video that they did over on SQL BI. It is about an hour long, but absolutely watch this video if you're taking advantage of that new composite model update in the December 2020 release. There are, a, you can get into trouble very quickly. Let me just say that. So there are things that can happen that can drastically hurt performance. And so you need to understand how this is working. Patrick and I are gonna be working on different videos that will just highlight certain best practices that go along with this. There are things that we're working on that, We've been exposed to some of those best practices. We want to bring them to you as well. I know everyone wants to use this feature. Watch this video. It is a must. And then Alberto Ferrari came out with another unplugged video. It's about 20 minutes long. This one is about testing data segmentation with the new composite model update. And this is just a, an actual real world example of what's going to be happening and how do you get this to be more performant? So he starts off with something that's just really slow and not something you may have would have expected, but then he goes through the process of debugging this down and actually digging in and making it more performant. He does call out that the DAX itself may not be totally optimized, but it's that thought process and the, just the, the, the mindset of how do you go about debugging this with tools like DAX Studio. Remember, go, go update DAX Studio.
So I just really like this video. I come from a support background and troubleshooting and this is what I love, right? So the, that thought process, the step-by-step, -step, like how do we actually bring it down to the simplest component, understanding how things work, this video has it all. All right, I wanna hand this over to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned, maybe it was something I didn't. Let me know in the comments below, we wanna hear it. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.